it's that time of year that a lot of us are going out to check on our colonies just to see how they're doing. And for some of us, we're realizing that some of our colonies have died. So today I'm gonna talk about the five different ways your bees can die, so let's go. Also, I was gifted this little baby smoker that I will be placing someplace hidden in every single video, so see if you're observant enough to find it. So the first most obvious way that colonies die that you've probably heard many, many times before is from Varroa. So how they do this is as the colony size begins to shrink in the fall time, that is when Varroa mites really take hold of the colony because they've been spending the entire year multiplying. And at that point, they become in such high numbers that there are more mites per bee and then that eventually ends up collapsing the colony. Um, First, by shrinking the cluster size, by killing off bees with the viruses, and by just being on the bee to begin with and weakening them. So the colony size will begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and that colony will eventually die of too much cold or um, isolation, starvation, because the colony size is too small to be able to keep the cluster warm and generate enough heat. Now, I already cleaned out this colony. This is one that did die, but one of the ways that you can tell if your colony died of mites is when you pick up your frame and you take it and you look along a brood frame at an angle. And what will happen is you'll likely see what's called guanine, guanine, guanine. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'll put it up on the screen so you know how it's spelled at least. But what it is, is it's mite poop. And it looks like there could be some right there actually. Um, it'll appear as little white specks at the tops of the cell. Um, so when Varroa breeds in the cell, they go down to the bottom and they hide in there until the cell is capped. And once it's capped, then they will go up onto the little larva that is in that cell and they'll feed on the larva. But then they will go up to the top of the cell and that is where they designate their pooping area, I guess you could call it. And then the mother mite and all other mites will always go to that one location at the top of the cell. So that ends up leaving those little white specks. Um, so you can tell if there was a really high mite load. If you see a lot of little white specks, then likely your mite load was really high and that is why they died. You can also tell by looking at the bees themselves and seeing if you could see any mites in them, um, in the pile of dead bees, you can kind of shift through it um, and see if you could find any. And you can also take a brood frame. So say you take this frame and you put out a white piece of paper and then just shake the frame in front of it so that the, um, the cell will be over the, the white piece of paper. And sometimes you'll see little white or little mites fall out onto the piece of paper. They're gonna appear like little orange saucers. Um, oh yeah, this one's a lot better. You can see, you see all those little white specks that is most likely mite poop. Um, so, the so the mite levels were likely high in this colony. Now, one last way you can also check, which I see, yeah, this, this colony definitely had some mites, um, is you can look at the bottom board and see if you see any mites. Now, my when I had opened this colony, the cluster was right here, but it was too, it was in the, the second deep up. So when I looked down in this corner, oh man, <laughs> do you see all those mites? Yeah, that is a lot of mites. Now this could be from the OA treatment that I did back in uh, November. Um, it could have been too cold for them to clean it out. I have noticed that some of my colonies um, don't really clean out the mites on the bottom board. But either way, this colony had a lot of mites. Yeah, you see all those mites on the bottom board. That is likely one of the reasons why they died. Um, they're most likely really weak from having a mite load that high in November, if this is just from my OA treatments. But 
yeah so fun fact too um you see all of those little orange mites those are female mites now you see like this one right here how it's a lighter color that's a male mite just a little fun fact um for when you're ever looking at mites you can kind of distinguish um doesn't really make a difference whether they're male or female but i don't know might just be cool for you to know <laughs> Now, the next way that your colony can die is from starvation. So, just because you see honey in a hive does not mean your colony did not die of starvation. Oftentimes, there can be honey just a frame over that they were just not able to get to and they ended up starving. This would be called isolation starvation. Um, it is very common in honeybee colonies, unfortunately, especially if the cluster size is too small. So the way you're going to be able to tell if your colony died of starvation is when you look at the cluster, I'll put up a clip of when I had opened this colony. When you look at the cluster and you see the bees, if you see a lot of bees, um, with their, with their their heads poking in the cell so you just see a bunch of bee butts poking out of the cell it's most likely that they did die of starvation or that was one of the contributing factors to why they died so bees typically move up in the colony um, as they eat through their food so if you have your bees on the very top bars um, of a colony it's a it's really hard for them to move over to another frame so one of the things that I messed up this year is I did not have enough food on my colonies, so I'm feeding with sugar. Now, sugar works, but it's definitely not ideal because what I'm also noticing is that as soon as I put that sugar on, those bees are going right up to the sugar and they're like, hey, this is a, like a free buffet, let's just eat this, and they don't even worry about the honey. Um, now, I don't know if this is because they are perceiving the sugar at the top of the hive as like a spill in the colony. Um, this is the same reason why whenever you put sugar water inside your colony, they just gulp it all down because they, they perceive it as there being a spill in the colony. So they're trying to clean it up. Now, I don't know if this is what they're also thinking when they have sugar in their colonies in the winter time, but I have noticed they will favor the sugar over honey. So so going forward, I will definitely always make sure I don't do splits too late in the year um, so that they have enough food on the colony for the winter time because I preferably don't want to have to be feeding sugar unless maybe in February if I absolutely have to. So starvation is a really big thing with our colonies. Um, as you can see in the clip, um, even though there was sugar all the way around them, because there wasn't sugar directly on top of them, that's, that colony ended up dying because the temperatures got way too cold. It was during this winter storm that we just had where the wind chill was down to negative 30. Crazy freaking cold. So yeah, there is no way they were able to break, break cluster in order to go find food. Um, and like I said, bees like to move up. They don't really like to go down. So in order for them to go over to the next frame, they would have had to go down and around, which that's pretty far for them, um, especially when it gets cold. So yeah, isolation, starvation, it's a killer. It sucks, but it happens to the best of us. <laughs> Now, another way your bees can die in your colony is from moisture. So when the bees are in the colony in cluster, they are creating heat and they're consuming honey, but they're also exhaling. And when they exhale, they release moisture in their breath that will then rise in the colony. That has to go somewhere. Otherwise, it's just going to collect on the top of the top of the, the lid or underneath the lid <laughs> um, and it's going to end up creating condensation that ends up dripping on the colony. Now another issue is the cold tops that we have um, outside our colonies when the snow collects on it and just the, the cold elements hit this lid it makes it, the top really really cold but then the inside is warm because the colony is generating heat and heat rises so that heat is going to go up and it's going to clash with the cold that's on top and end up creating um, more condensation right underneath the lid. Now that is why I use insulation foam um, to help prevent this because it keeps those two temperatures from clashing together. Um, and then what I also like to use, I wish I would have used it in all of my colonies, um, but I like to use a upper entrance. Um, 
Oh, it appears that this one doesn't have one on it. But typically I like to have an upper entrance in my colonies so that any excess moisture can go out of the colony instead of being trapped inside there. And also what happens sometimes is you'll get snow that collects on the bottom board like this and see how it's completely blocking the bottom entrance. You want there to be airflow still going through this so that they are able to get airflow into the colony. Um, otherwise they could possibly suffocate and you definitely don't want that. So yeah, this is so weird that I thought I had a, I swore I had an upper entrance on this colony. Um, But anyways, so what ends up happening is when there's too much moisture in the colony, have you ever been to Florida in the winter time and say the temperature is like 45 degrees? Now, if you're from the Midwest and you're like 45 degrees, oh my gosh, sports bra and tank top, like that's a super warm day. But in Florida, when the temperature is that cold, there is also a really, really high um, humidity. So that 45 degrees feels like zero degrees. So wet cold feels insanely cold and that will make the bees have to produce more heat and it's going to be a lot harder for them to keep warm. Um, and a lot of times they just end up dying because I mean, if you're soaking wet and you go outside in the cold, Ooh, that is so freaking cold. It'll end up dropping their body temperature rapidly. So a way that you can tell if your bees died of moisture, I'll put up a clip, is you're going to see bees that appear to be wet. Um, they're going to be darker in color, and you're also going to look around the colony, and if you see like little spots of maybe mold in that colony, you know the moisture levels were really, really high. And if you also see water on the bottom board that's just pooling there, yeah, your moisture levels were really, really, really high. Now, another thing that I noticed this year is when I went into a couple of my colonies that died, I saw that some of my um, frames had uncapped honey. So what happens is the bees, when they are either, I don't know if they got it from the sugar that I put in the colony, if maybe they're breaking down that sugar and trying to store it in the cells, or if this was left over from me feeding all the way through until it had to have been like mid-November, um, which is pretty late to be feeding. But what happens is they put that in the cell, but then they have to dehydrate it so that the water level goes down so that it doesn't spoil. And once it gets to a certain, hum um, a certain moisture level, then they will cap the cell. But in these cells, um, I did like poke my finger in them and taste them and they were super, super watery. So I'm wondering if probably these cells were also creating moisture in the colony as it was trying to evaporate, especially if the colony was close to them, which I did see bees on the actual uncapped cells. Um, so likely they're trying to dehydrate them, which then released moisture and made the colony very cold and very wet. Now, the next way a colony can die is from Nazima. And what that is, is it is a fungus that can live in a colony. It's something that they can clear out on their own in the spring and the summertime. But in the wintertime, when they cannot leave the colony to relieve themselves, um, it's a lot harder for them to get rid of it. And what happens is there are two different kinds of Nazima. Um, Nazima apis, which is where it will pretty much make them have dysentery. So you see all of this all over the colony. Um, I am wondering if this colony might have a Nazima infection. Um, we'll see. We'll definitely keep an eye on this colony to see if they end up making it through the winter. Like I said, they can usually clear it up on their own. Um, but if the levels get really bad, it can collapse the colony. And then there's one other type, which is Nazima serana. I don't know if I'm pro pronouncing that right. But that one doesn't have symptoms, but it'll just have a very, very high bee mortality rate. So you'll see a lot of dead bees on the bottom board. So this one is a little bit hard to prevent. Um, this is mostly just, you're gonna have to use like antibiotics or something like that. But personally, I don't have a whole lot of experience with Nazima, but this is just one of the ways your bees can die in the winter time. Now, the last way your bees can die in the winter that everybody always says is, oh, my bees froze to death. 
Um, so this is actually just a, symp a symptom, not a cause of why your bees died. The bees, they can generate heat pretty well, but in order for them to do that, they need to one, have enough uh, food, so have enough honey to be able to consume that and use that to generate heat and vibrate their bodies. If they don't have enough food, they're not going to have enough energy and they're going to end up dying and yes, freezing to death. <laughs> um, same goes for moisture and same goes from varroa mites, varroa mites making the cluster size too small to be able to generate enough heat. So yes, they freeze to death but that was not the root cause so yeah so I hope that was helpful especially for all of you new beekeepers out there um, I know your first year beekeeping can be kind of sad kind of hard there's just so many things you have to learn and just remember if your bees did die already that please do not give up it is all a learning process and Honestly, that's just a part of being a beekeeper is your ability to be able to get yourself back up and dust yourself off and try again. So I hope you guys are keeping warm and I hope your colonies are super happy and healthy. And did you find the smoker? <laughs> and with that, I will see you guys in the next one.